Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use Studio 721 ArtKit to create your own NFT collection. So this tool is just for creating the artwork and metadata and uploading it to decentralized storage like IPFS. This tool doesn't handle creating the smart contract or the mining interface. So you can use just this tool and uh, create your own custom smart contract, use a different tool for that, or you can use this tool and then um, you'll, you'll get an IPFS URL that you can paste into this contract tool. But anyway, let's get started with ArtKit. So when you uh, click into ArtKit, you'll see you can create a new collection or a new generative art collection. And these are just two different templates for how your initial project setup should look. I want to add some more templates, so um, by the time you see this, it might look a little different. So we're going to start with new collection, and you should see three example NFTs here, each with a title, an image, and a description. And if you want, you can press quick edit and change title. Um, over on the left here, you'll see the files in the project. So one of the cool things about Studio 721 and ArtKit in particular is uh, everything is local to your computer until you decide to publish it to decentralized storage or to the blockchain. So um, my project here is actually a zip file. If I go here to uh, File Save, I can actually download my collection as a zip, unzip it, and I see that you know I have all the same files here. So I could even change this zip file on my computer, zip it up, and upload it back into Studio 721 if I wanted. Um, so I could, you know, generate my art or add all my images that way. But you can also do most of that stuff through the tool. So I'll be demonstrating that. So if I click on this uh, zero token JSON file on the left, we can see this is the metadata that makes up my NFT. So we got name, description, and image. And I could, for example, upload a different image. I have this uh, polyhedron handy. It was just a 3JS, like, hello world demo that I was playing around with. So when I Drag that in, we can see it uh, updated the image URL in my token metadata, and it's actually pointing to a local file that's also in my uh, zip, my collection zip. So we can see that this image got uploaded and the reference um, in the NFT metadata got changed to point to that image. So when I upload to IPFS, we'll see what that actually does. Um, well, let me go ahead and do that now, actually. So I'm actually going to delete the other two tokens here. Use Shift to select both and then delete. Um, and then I'm going to go up here into the menu and say Publish, Upload to IPFS. ArtKit uses NFT storage currently as its storage provider. So this is a free way of hosting files on IPFS. This uh, nft.storage tool is provided by Protocol Labs, the company behind IPFS. And you can read more about it, but they'll essentially host your files for free for at least a couple years. Um, so, you know, probably good enough to start. And then you can always add redundant storage um, providers if you need to. Anyway, you make an API key on their site, you paste in this box, and then you hit Publish to IPFS. And this actually happens in two steps. So the first step is we upload your assets, and then the second step is we upload your metadata. Um, the metadata actually has to refer to the uploaded assets. So that's why we have to do like a part one and then a part two. We replace the local file reference with an IPFS file reference in your metadata. Um, and then we get a link that we can use in the Studio 721 contract tool. That's what we'll end up using in this little video series. We also just get your regular old IPFS link that points to your files, um, your metadata files. And then uh, you can also browse on the uh, IPFS web interface. So we can see in my assets folder, this one image got uploaded to IPFS. And then in my metadata folder, sometimes this takes a second to load. It can actually take quite a while to load sometimes. So if it doesn't show up right away like it did for me, don't worry about it. It's probably fine. Um, but, but yeah, so for me, I got lucky. It showed up right away. And I can see token number zero. And so I can see my screenshot uh, image file PNG here. It got URL encoded, but also the URL was swapped from slash assets to an IPFS URL. So let me open this in a new tab. Chrome doesn't natively support IPFS, but I can put IPFS.io slash IPFS and use the uh, Protocol Labs web uh, gateway. 
So I can see my polyhedron is here and it's linked into my metadata properly. So with everything uploaded like this, um, I could go ahead and use this link directly in a smart contract, or I can use you know, the, um, the IPFS version of it directly in a smart contract and be good to go. Of course, we probably wouldn't want to make smart contract with just one NFT because it'd be expensive. So I want to show another example, and this time I'm going to make a bigger collection. So I'm going to refresh here. Um, it's warning me that I didn't save the zip file. And so if I reload now, my NFT collection disappears. It'll still be stored on IPFS, but my, my, my zip file that stores my work uh, will go away. So make sure to download file save your zip file. Um, okay, so reload here. I'm gonna say new generative art collection this time. So this is just a different template. The tool is more or less the same. Uh, the tokens are blank this time because I haven't generated my image previews yet. So the key difference now is in assets, I have this index HTML page. So the way this is going to work is when I upload the assets, this page will actually be an interactive web page stored on IPFS. And that's what's going to be my main NFT file. So on OpenSea or whatever, when people play with my NFT, it's actually going to be a live interactive web page. You could have animation or audio or whatever. I still do, though, need to generate image thumbnail previews. So for, any, um, for every NFT in my collection, even though they'll all use the same interactive web page with different parameters, um, they all need a different image file. So let me walk through how this works. So in the metadata token files, we can see that these all now use the animation URL uh, to point to the assets index.html file, and they pass their own token ID into the um, ID uh, query parameter here. When I, um, when I hit generate images and attributes, what's going to happen is this web page is going to get loaded in an iframe for each token file, and uh, the ID is going to get passed in, and also a Boolean indicating that it's taking a screenshot, or like we need to capture an image preview or generate um, metadata, as, uh, metadata attributes. So down here at the bottom, the key function is after my code has uh, generated the artwork or the attributes or whatever, I can return those attributes or return a base64 encoded image and I call um, save metadata, artkit.save metadata, and that will store the metadata and attributes back in my zip file here containing my collection. So let's go ahead and try that. I'm gonna hit generate images and attributes, and then we'll see we have a quick preview here so we can see what this artwork looks like for different token IDs. Make sure it looks okay. And then we'll hit generate for three tokens. And now what happened is we have this uh, thumbnail directory that has my image previews for my live web page. So the, again, the actual NFT is going to be this interactive web page, but for it to show up properly in wallets, we still need actual image files. Um, and it's nice to have those on IPFS so they're immutable. If we look at the uh, token JSON files now, we'll see that the thumbnail got linked in here under the image field. And then also we generated some attributes. So shape circle, shape square, and so um, we can generate much more than just three. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to resize my NFT collection. I'm gonna to say token set collection size. And then what this does is it's going to let me specify any collection size, and it's going to duplicate a specific token that many times until I have you know 200 tokens total. So I'm gonna hit update collection here, and we can see you know, everything got generated out. If we go back to the collection overview, we can see it actually did copy uh, token two specifically. So that's why they all have the same image. Um, and we're gonna change that. And another thing that is useful is you can right click and say select sibling files, and that will select every file in the same folder. So in this case, it will select all of our 200 token files. And so if I wanted to like rename all my tokens, I can say my um, cool shape. And we can see it's actually renaming all of my um, tokens at once. And I can use this token ID variable um, 
to specify like the actual token number in the name and description if I want. And I can also add attributes. So I don't know, uh, test, and that can equal hello. And maybe I'll move it to be the top attribute. I don't know why. And then I can see that add it to everything. So you can sort of um, generate what you want and then also batch edit as needed once you have a ton of token files. And the tool is pretty fast up to even 20,000 token files, which is cool. Okay, uh, the last thing I wanna do before I upload these is I wanna generate out the new uh, images and attributes. So I can see like I've got a lot more tokens that I could preview now. So I'm gonna generate all 200. So it's again, loading up these iframes that contain the HTML, JS and CSS files. Um, those files are all concatenated into one HTML file. It's not bundled using something like Webpack, so you can't have NPM dependencies. Um, right now in the um, default template, it does load scripts from Unpackage for convenience, but I personally recommend putting your actual JavaScript files and whatnot into your uh, assets folder here so that everything is sort of local to this project. Anyway, um, now we have all of our thumbnails generated out. We have all of our metadata files. We are ready to upload our collection to IPFS. So again, go up here, publish, upload to IPFS, and I'll say publish to IPFS. So this could take a little longer um, because it's a lot more files. It happened pretty quickly. Um, sometimes it can take minutes or longer. Um, if you're a developer, you can sort of check the progress in the console, but otherwise, you know, uh, there isn't a ton of progress feedback that I can give, so you sort of just have to wait it out. Um, anyway, once you're done, once again, if we want to, we can browse our assets and metadata. Let's first look at the metadata. So this may take a second to load. It can actually take a lot longer to load. Um, I've been pretty lucky in these demos, uh, in the demos so far, and it's loaded pretty quickly. We're gonna see. All right, um, I skipped ahead maybe about 45 seconds, but it showed up eventually. So we can see that our uh, token JSON files are all here. They have our interactive web page under animation URL. They have our image. These both point to IPFS, so they're immutable. And they have the attributes that we generated out. Um, note that uh, that test attribute was overwritten when I generated new attributes. Um, so those are the tokens. And then if we go back, we can also look at the assets. So here is our live web page. I can actually test it for any token ID. So um, I'll test it for token ID 11. We can see that's what it looks like. And now if we check out the thumbnail file for 11, we can see pretty much the same. Um, my code for centering it clearly has a bug in it, but uh, the idea is this is what your wallet would show. Um, in the overview or like the gallery with all the NFTs. And then when you actually um, uh, click in onto the detail page, then you get the interactive version that can be animated or have music or whatever. And those are all being um, created from a single web page just with the token ID passed as a URL parameter. So the last thing I want to point out is we have this link here, you know, this IPFS link. Uh, we, we have two actually. Um, this first one is the one that we'll be using. So this is formatted using the uh, Studio 721 template format. So we can pop this directly into the contract tool and use this in our smart contract. For any other kind of smart contract, we might use this uh, URL and you'll just have to make sure that your um, token ID is correctly added to the end of it as part of the contract's token URI function. Anyway, uh, that's it for ArtKit. I hope that was a useful overview that showed off some of the cool features. And next up, we're going to actually publish a smart contract to uh, the blockchain that uses this collection we just created.